Step right up. Come on in. If you'd like to take the grand tour of this lonely house that once was home sweet home, I have nothing here to sell you, just some things that I will tell you, some things that'll chill you to the bone. Little George Jones there. <laughs> like, I forgot the lyric, obviously. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, checking in here on a another Expiration Friday, checking on our trades, hoping to find a pile of money. But I'm waiting out of my whiskey today because my sweethearts, oil, gold, silver, miners, wow, 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 they're having a bad day. So let's see where we are right now. But first, let's see. I've done almost nothing this week, but let's make sure we start with an update of what we have done as soon as that internet kicks in. There it is. So this is all we've done. So you can see on Friday, last Friday, all we did was sell a call on the Googler at 150. And currently we're going to be battling that as you might already know if you are keeping up on Google. Google currently at 150.55, but that's good news. Very good news. Had a Unity roll. We rolled Unity to 33.50. Now at the moment, Unity is at 33.88. So that might sound bad, but as you can see down here on Monday, we've already rolled that out for another dollar bill on our 10 contracts. So that's an extra $1,000. And we got paid $350 for doing so. And it expires 216. If you know anything about the movie Avatar, Unity provided the graphics for that. And if you know about Apple's new Vision Pro, Unity does all the graphics for that as well. So look into that company if you want a volatile, potential, tremendous upside company. But be prepared to ride this thing up and down, all around. So right now we do have it at thirty-four fifty, which adds another thousand bucks as we talked about. So what else do we have? AGQ, that is a two times bull on silver. We rolled that yesterday. Uh, Twenty-nine bucks, fifteen contracts expires March fifteenth. That is a. Well, I got a buddy checking in. I need to answer this real quick. Hold on. And just like that, we're back. So we have that silver bull on the board for next month. It's a monthly trader. I prefer the weeklies, but we did collect $270 for that. Celsius, we rolled, and we rolled from 54 bucks a share to 50 Not No, it was $55. So from $55 a share to 59 which on our 1,000 shares, that adds $4,000. Plus, we collected $400 for doing so. And Celsius is currently trading. <laughs> I still haven't put it on the big board. Never mind. We'll look at that in a second. Celsius is and should be up on this board. Why aren't you? Let's put it on right now as we speak. I use TradingView. I don't know if you've dabbled with TradingView. I really enjoy TradingView. I like to have four charts open at the same time. Where did you go? Okay, so Celsius is currently trading at 57.84. So we are good right there. It's a volatile stock as well if you follow that. But I do like the cut of its jib. There's our unity at 350. And then we did dust Devin off again. We got old Devin on the board. $45 calls, 23 of them for February 23rd. We collected $391. And oil is down today, so that means... That call is safe. Devin at 41.58. They just can't get off the mat. They cannot get off the mat. And then the only thing so far today has been the target roll. The good news of this roll is twofold. One, we rolled from 142 all the way to 148. So that's $6. So what is that times 800? It's a, a lot of money. <laughs> Six dollars times eight hundred shares is that forty eight hundred? Yeah, it's forty eight hundred. But we also get to add another round of dividends for eight hundred eighty dollars. So that's five thousand six hundred eighty dollars that we've potentially locked in because Target 
may, you know, I'll, I would probably let them go at 148, depending on my mood, because that would be nicely above, finally, nicely above around my original positions. And I rode that thing oh, down like the raging bull at Great America in Gurney, Illinois. Road, road target all the way down to 107 from what I paid, which was what? So this is all we've done so far this week. A couple of things. Let's check on target just because I think I'm at 140. Is it under 144? So, okay. Yeah, it's under 143. So average position, average cost is 142.77. And we're going to try to get out at 148 along with all the dividends and all the dollar bills that we've collected. So in fact, let's go to the individual position to see what we can do here. Where are you? Come on up. Come on up. Internet. Where is the target? Right there. Go to that chart, I mean, to that spreadsheet. So you can see we started with some puts and look what those strike prices were at 152 50 150 150 148 then we were at 155 then we started getting involved when as far as on the ownership side when they started to go off a cliff and fall out of bed we bought 300 shares at 138 we bought 200 shares at 133 seemed like great deals to me at the time they turned out not to be so we continued to buy a good idea. I like the buy high, sell low strategy. So we've got 114,216 in right now. And then currently we've collected $11,614 between dividends and premium, but we still need to add that recent trade. And you can see where it was. It was at the 142 and we went to the 148, right? Yep. And 38 is the expiration on that. So let's throw another insert a row and let's go below and that was today and today is two nine roll out the barrel roll it up to one four to eight eight contracts what do we collect buck oh four i'll take it i will take it that'll pay for probably half of my meal tonight at gamba restaurante so I'll do the math. I won't do it in front of you now, but you know the math I like to do. So that changed the number, right? And so we'll we'll do I'll rerun the math based on what I have invested, which is 114,216. I'll have to re can refigure how many days into the trade, which will then give me a new percentage as far as an annualized return. But this is really going to be bumped up nicely if these shares are called away at 148 and I do collect another round of dividends because Target has X dividend date next week. No, two weeks. Uh, the 20th of February. Cha 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 cha. Speaking of Gamba, I was looking at it earlier. Here is the Gamba Restaurante going out to dinner with our friends Jeff and Casey and Tina and JR. They call him Jonathan, but his, his mom, look at that. This is actually what I'm looking at tonight the glazed pork chop with asparagus. We'll see what I do and I'll let you know. But our buddy Jonathan, who I call JR, because the story behind it is hilarious. His mom named him JR after JR Ewing, but they wouldn't let him leave the hospital with just initials on his birth certificate. <laughs> so she just threw Jonathan in there. And so me and his mom are the ones that call him JR. Because once I heard the story, I always just call him Jonathan. And then one day that story come out and I'm like, um, you are J JR from now on. Because I actually loved the show Dallas. And in fact, Stacy and I re-watched it on DVD from Netflix back in 2007 when she was pregnant with Kid One. So we had that going for us. Where were we? I don't know. You were just babbling on. There's the Target. Let's go back to the big board. What do we need to look for? Alcoa, I may, should I add to that? Because Alcoa is down, way down in its whiskey today. Uh, it's, a, it's up a little from when I was just looking at it. It's at 2707. My position is what? What do I own that at? It's 
above 2707, I believe. Anyway, these calls, four cents left. I'm going to let them expire at full profit and then wait for a green day. When's that going to be soon? It's very volatile as well. Wait a minute. Where's our position? It went away. Go back here. AA, Alcoa. And I know I'm, I think I'm at 27 and change on that. No, 2670. Hey, not bad. So if I get back to that, if it goes back to that number today, which it was trading in the high 26s, but if I can approach 2670, I will add another thousand shares of Alcoa because I plan on writing it up to 3540 if I have the guts because that's where it's going. You keep saying that, but well, I did write it up once to 3250 and I entered in the 25s, sold all that position off and made some dollar bills. APA, that is an oil company. They, I will have to let that expire at full profit and then get back in on the calls once it's having a green day. Clean Spark is just too far out of its whiskey or it's just rocket shipped on me. I wish I would have known it was going to double. That's the huge downside to covered calls, especially aggressive covered calls. Because if we look at my position is just under seven, so I'm going to make almost nothing. Oh, no, it's <laughs> you little liar. It's $5.45. Okay. But if I try to, if I try to roll these, let's just look, where's that roll at? Or what? So here's the position, right? So seven dollar calls expiring today with Clean Sparks currently trading at fourteen thirty four, up thirty six percent today. <laughs> Holy moly! Then you're telling me that a blow off top isn't coming? No, I'm telling you it is. But if we do math, okay, we know it's a volatile position. So if we tried to roll this, we have to be at least twenty five percent, I would imagine, as far as an annualized return to do so. And how far out would you have to go to, to get it? So you can't go one week out, right? Because we'd have to go all the way down to seven. And then, I mean, we can still look at it. It's actually a bigger number than I thought. Oh, yeah, that's why. Because it just went from 500 to 200. Hello, but let's do that math. $200. We're talking about a $14,000 position on this covered call. Right? Yeah. So that's... Now it's at $100. Let's just use 200 for fun divided by 14,000 divided by seven times 365. What? <laughs> Are you doing right math? Um, let's do it again. $200 divided by 14,000 divided by seven days. That's what we're adding to the trade. Okay. So yeah. I guess I'll take my 200 if I can get it. What's 100? Well, it'd be half of that. <laughs> 100 divided by 14,000 divided by seven days, multiply by 365. That's still 37%. But I, why, for some reason, I don't want $100 on 14,000, do I? Now it's zero. So I'll keep watching it because it's of its volatility. I, I will definitely take the 200. How's that? And then I will also monkey around with time frames. So if we go out another seven days, let's just use the same idea. Okay, so it was 720 and we got a 720 credit. So right now it's flat, it, but a minute ago it was at 100. A minute before that was 200. So two weeks out at the seven bucks is what? 730. So that's another week. Okay, so there's your 200. 200 divided by 14,000 divided by 14 days multiplied by 365. That's still that's still good math. That's still good math. And then again, you got the big time protection on the downside. If we do want to get, you know, to protect ourselves, if it decides to fall out of bed and go from its like super high down back down to under seven or even to eight, we still have seven on the board to have those shares called away if we get too scared. So I thought I wasn't going to have to watch that, but I do want to watch that just for math purposes because otherwise the money's just going to be sitting at 5%, right? 
Uh, GDXJ, that's the gold miner junior, and they're at 99% because JDXJ is at 3280. So we'll let that expire at full profit. The Google 150, we got to keep an eye on because Google is at 150.66. So right now we still got 76 cents, 75 cents left on the bone. Um, and we, we can't let it go at 150 because I paid more than that. Is it that dangerous to sell covered calls under your cost basis? It is. It is dangerous. So we'll even if we rolled it now, we'd be able to roll it out and cover ourselves, right? Because our position is at like 154. So if we just wanted to cover it and sleep well at night, how far do we have to go out to cover the 73 cents, right? That's what I want to see. So... We wouldn't be able to go a week out because we'd only be able to get we there's a too big of a gap here. It's a two dollar and fifty cent gap. I bet if we go another week, we can maybe catch a dollar dollar bills. Nope, still two and a half. So at 155, we can cover we'd be above our cost basis. So we'd have some share appreciation and we can still collect $116. So that's something we'll be looking to do. Um, but if it comes back down before the end of the day, then I'll let it, you know, it gets under our covered call strike price. Then I'll let it expire worthless and wait for the next run. Otherwise I also don't want it to get too far away, away from me. So I only have to go out two weeks to cover and make bucks and go from 150 to 155 on the strike price is a big deal, right? It's a huge deal. Palantir though is way out on me it is rocket shipped this was a cover call i sold weeks ago just it was in my head it was a earnings play premium collection fun fest right did i think palantir was going to report good earnings yes did i have any idea it was going to be just blowout plus amazing conference call i don't know if you listened to um alex carp on that conference call but he was what they call a bamf listen to his portion of the conference call because he scripts nothing he just talks if you compare that to elon musk's most recent conference call you would bail on tesla and put go all in on palantir but right now these are going to be gone i already had 500 of them called away early so I did have 2,000 shares in this position 500 was called away last night 1500 remain I don't think I have any way to roll out of this and, you know, with any reasonable return. Because even if we tried to go to 1650 next week, we'd be at what? 805. So you would collect $100 on your 32,000. Oh, wait, it's not even 32,000, is it? Because now it's 1500, 1500 shares times. 1650 so that's 24,750 so a hundred dollars divided by 24,750 divided by seven times 365 it's 21 percent that's not horrible but you see that doesn't mean i'm going to get it filled because it's already showing 40. so i'm going to live and learn on this i did make i some i did make some dollar bills on Palantir with the earnings because I had a thousand shares unencumbered and that I but I did sell out at like 2102. <laughs> oh, are you sure you're cut out for this? I have no I have no idea. I really don't. But let's see. Was it 2102? That was the number in my head that I sold at. There it is. Yeah. 2102. So that was a thousand shares. I sold that. What day would that be? Tuesday? And what has it done since then? Just rocketed, continued to rocket. It is currently trading at 2457. So I left, there's another $3,500 that would have been on the bone, but yeah, it was, you know, I, I entered this position there, 1637. So I still made what? Let's do the math, shall we? 2102 minus. 1637 equals that times 1000. So I did make $4,650 in what turned out to be what, two weeks? That's not too bad. 
and again, I really, I mean, I should have more FOMO built into me, but I've told you once, I'll tell you again, I just don't suffer from FOMO. So it doesn't matter to me. And, and I'm not even saying that to protect myself, like some people would protect their ego. My ego is just, fl- it's flat. It used to be high back when I was young and I was building my real estate company and investing. I had a much different ego then. But what I've learned is that it you'll be humbled at any time. And I was humbled during the Great Recession when the real estate market crashed and I was planning the white Bronco. Um, I had a whole, I wrote out a whole thesis on the white Bronco, which would be, I was going to, I don't need to tell you the details, but it was basically bailing out <laughs> on all of my debt because I had like millions of dollars in debt at the time. And if you know why it's called the white Bronco, leave that in the comments below because that means you're pretty cool. SoFi, 11, buck, 11 bucks on these calls. We do have 100 contracts, so that's 10,000 shares. SoFi looking pretty nice after it took a, you know, it fell, it fell out of bed after it rocketed up to like, what, $9.60 after um, after earnings, currently at 8 20 so it was like upsetting me for a while. So we'll look to roll that today. And if we rolled it now, what would we look at? Would we try to go as high as 950? Do we think there's enough legs in SoFi? Let's go out like, let's go to that third week of March. So it doesn't have 50 centers for us. If I go to 10, I mean, that's $1,300. I don't think it's going to 10 between now and March 15th. But I'm going to think that through because what are we at? 767 or so on our cost basis? 787. Okay. So 787, we can make 1300 bucks and have that upside, $2.13 upside. So there's nothing wrong with that, right? So we'll be looking the roll so far today. And what else is on there? Oh, we got the Teslas. The Teslas, we'll roll that today. The UVIX is at what? 702, it's down half a percent. So we'll wait for it to go green again on us before we sell calls, so we'll let that expire. So that is all we have today and lovely dinner tonight. I'm excited about that. We have dinner tomorrow night. That's with my mother for her birthday, which was February 5th. She's now 76 years old and doesn't look a day over, I don't know, maybe 62. Seriously, (laughs) she looks way better than I do. And I'm only 52. So that's my update for you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next video.